happiness through curiosity on TRS Clips. In the world today, they have the concept of disruptors, disruptive companies. For example, Apple or Uber or Netflix. They came in and they disrupted the way things were done and they kind of shifted the market. But what I tell people is that there are also spiritual disruptors in the world, saints, sages, what we call in India, sadhus, who come in to our lives and start dropping bombs of wisdom. And it causes some disruption in your life. And basically at the age of 15, I started meeting monks, meeting spiritual people. And they started dropping these bombs of wisdom in my life. And it was beginning to shake my life because I had a certain notion of what the future ahead was. I had a certain notion of what success was. And with these bombs of wisdom, they were like decimating the landscape of my future. It was like making me really think about things. Like what, for example? You know, what, what would I do as a career? Uh, would I get married? Is that what everyone's meant to do? Uh, is making money and status symbols, is this the measure of what is uh, going to really make me happy? All of these things, all of these questions, where am I going to live? What kind of lifestyle am I going to have? Uh, how should I be perceived by the world? Um, all of these things, they started helping me think in a different way. Okay. But yeah. what were the bombs of wisdom that they dropped on you? The bombs of wisdom was that they opened me up to a new world. Before that, I'd only been thinking about this world. But the old words of the scripture were opening up new worlds. They were explaining that there's reality beyond this world. There's identity beyond this material frame. There's purpose beyond the duties and responsibilities of this world and our immediate life. And they began shifting the, the why, why we exist. And that was making me think more broadly. Before I was only thinking about the how and the what of what I do in this immediate situation. But now they helped me to begin thinking uh, of a deeper why, which helped me to uh, explore newer worlds and newer ways of living. Why do we exist? In the deepest sense, to find happiness. <laughs> okay. They asked our teacher, Srila Prabhupada, what is the purpose of life? And he said, to enjoy. And then he said, but you don't know how. Mm. So the scriptures say, Anandamaya Bhyashat, that the very nature of the soul is to seek happiness. But if we want to really seek the deepest type of happiness, then we need to get the, to the deepest sense of our own identity, who we are. Okay. And so what the disruptors were helping me to do is get to my deepest why. Okay. You see, this is really important. Like, if, so, if I say to you, Ranveer, what is your goal in life? And you say, I want to be rich and wealthy. I know this is not the truth. <laughs> Maybe it is. I want to be rich and wealthy. But then I'm going to ask you, why? And then you may say, well, I really want to go and uh, just be free to go on holidays and vacations whenever I want. And I say, why? And then you say, because I want a life that's fun, exciting and adventurous. You see, just in that small process, the goal of wanting to have a life in which you're experiencing fun, adventure and excitement, that's very different to a, a life in which your goal is to become wealthy. Because there's a possibility that if you haven't got to that deepest why, you could get really wealthy and have a super boring life because you haven't got to the deepest why. And so what spiritual teachers help us to do is get to the deepest why. Okay. Um, so I've had this deepest why 
question in my mind since I was a little kid. And that's probably why I'm doing this show where we bring on so many spiritual people to re-answer that question because it's an extremely long answer. Mm. And I've spoken to people of different faiths. I've spoken to people from different spiritual schools. The one thing I've figured is that you need openness and emotion, which I think in our culture refers to the word bhakti mm. toward the higher power that it will take you to that final answer. Uh, the second thing you need is knowledge, vidya, which you gain from scriptures or you gain from conversations or you gain from mentors. The third is sadhana, which is discipline. Uh, in a process, now that could be prayer, meditation, possibly social work. I don't know. Would you add any fourth factor to this? Am I missing out something? Am I misguided? The fourth factor I would add is seva. Okay. Service. We find ourselves by thinking of others. We tell people you earn a living by what you get, but you earn a life by what you give. We live to give. We are spiritual beings, but the very nature of the spiritual being is to serve. And therefore, when you have bhakti, when you have love and emotion in your heart, when you have knowledge, vidya, which is calibrating your vision of life, and when you have sadhana, which is spiritual practice, which is helping you to become strong and determined, the net result of all of that is it should result in service, in contribution, in making other people's lives beautiful and making the world a beautiful place. And that for me was really one of the beautiful things about living as a monk. Not just that I could develop my bhakti, my knowledge and my sadhana, but that I could then live a life in which I could try to serve the world. When you take sannyas, it's said that the sannyasi gives up the small world of family life in order to embrace the whole world as his family. And I found in my journey of spiritual life that in service, I've had the deepest spiritual experiences. How's your viewpoint about family life changed now? When you look at it from the outside, I feel a little hesitant using the word from the outside. Yeah. Uh, but now when you look at, say people you grew up with who have their families and their children, what's your honest viewpoint? My honest viewpoint is that in life, it's whatever you make of it. Okay. I have friends who have gone into family life and are having like huge struggles, relationship difficulties, financial problems. And factually in family life, they're struggling to materially survive, what to speak of spiritually explore because life can become so overwhelming. But I also have friends who live in a family life who have a partner who's also spiritually inclined and together they're going on a beautiful journey and assisting each other to deeper levels of spiritual discovery. Um, so I think is what you make of it. And in every life you live, there are difficulties and there are great opportunities. Yeah. Even man. living as a sannyasi, I have also, you know, certain complexities that I have to navigate. So, for uh, example, lack of personal space, living a very public life, um, uh, constantly being on call, and uh, and these things are also beautiful things as well, but they can also become overwhelming as well. So it's all about finding that balance. Yeah, uh, I think my recent discovery in this phase of my life has been all about extracting maximum happiness from even small moments because I found myself, you know, doing my sadhana, uh, living life with discipline, living life with devotion. And yet just because of the circumstances of my life, the people I met, I ended up focusing too much on sadness. I think I was trying to focus on healing, but in order to find out what you need to heal inside you, I was trying to look out for what's broken first. And then I sat with that brokenness for a very long time, probably a majority of the last one and a half years. 
and only in the last 3 to 4 months i feel something has shifted again as an outcome of the people i met in my life but i've started focusing on moments of happiness where if i'd met you on a saturday morning just like this in this prior one and a half year phase there would have definitely been a voice in my head that would have said oh man I have to record on a saturday i'm recording tomorrow <sighs> i guess it's a lot of work and suddenly in the last 3 months my inner voice tells me dude look at your life this is like the best job in the world mm. you're getting to learn for a living you're getting to have these conversations with these people where people die to talk to these people and you're just having conversations like this in your living room so i don't know what happened but the perspective shifted heavily uh it was because of someone i met uh, who just told me that listen you need to do this you, you seem like a really sad person and uh i just like sharing my own evolution story with my audience uh but can you explain what happened spiritually here did i work out some karmas why was that one and a half year phase so heavy mentally because you are an outcome of the people you meet and the circumstances that happened to you so was i supposed to go through all that anyway was i cleaning up something sometimes you have to go through a material breakdown to have a spiritual breakthrough this is exactly what happens in the bhagavad gita arjun goes through perhaps the most intense time of his life on that battlefield doesn't last one and a half years <laughs> maybe just the uh, 20 minutes but in that, those moments he's really uh it really resets his priorities it makes him look a little deeper it makes him uh detach himself and look at his life from a different perspective and in sadness in difficulty in challenges and obstacles that we encounter that's the great gift which is offered to us in so much of my travels now one of the concepts i'm sharing with people more and more is how to become comfortable with the uncomfortable that pain is a uh, something which is helping us to unravel purpose problems if digested in the right way are meant to lead to progress and the uncomfortable situations though it's not something desirable to us it's not also unnatural they're meant to come because it's in that pain that alarm clock you see it's almost you can think of these points in your life like an alarm clock when that alarm clock goes off in the morning it's almost like the sound of like horror <laughs> but we if we're able to respond if we're able to get our mind together and wake up then it means we live such a meaningful life And so yeah for sure I'm sure that that period in your life of sadness was uh very much required for your spiritual journey. So if you enjoyed this video subscribe to TRS Clips for more.